My name is Mohammed. Some call me a humanitarian, some call me an emergency aid worker, but currently in California, I'm a nurse anesthesia resident. I never saw myself in healthcare. I never saw myself doing anything in the medical field. And one day my brother calls me and he says, um, you know, Rush Hospital is looking for medical interpreters. And I said, no, I'm not interested. I don't like the hospital. I don't like the way hospitals smell. I hung up. He calls me back and he says, uh, they're paying $20 an hour. And I said, okay, hold on, where do I sign up again for this? I ended up taking the job and I absolutely hated it. Until one day, uh, my boss calls me and he says, I need you to translate for somebody. It was a mother and her daughter. And the mother says, I translate, three of my kids passed away. Keep in mind, this woman had nothing. The way she made it here, she was a charity case. A physician heard her story and he paid for everything. Uh, she grabs my wrist and she says, I want to give you something. And she reaches into her purse and she reaches in and she grabs these wafers and she starts crying and she says, I'm so embarrassed. I wish I can give you something more. And uh, that's when it hit me. It's always the people that have nothing that'll give you everything. So she gives me the wafers and she says, can you please promise me you'll help people in my situation? I told her, okay, I'll make you this promise. Actually, till this day, I haven't opened up the wafers. Eight years later, I found myself living in a refugee camp. Um, taking care of close to 3,000 refugees at night, most of the time by myself, with the help of other refugees. I've had to help Iraqi uh, refugees from Afghanistan that have suffered. Uh, uh, obviously, Syrian refugees have been big on the news. Did I think I was going to end up in a refugee camp uh, living amongst them? No. I thought I was just going to go in, do like a 9 to 5, and, and go home, but I got attached. I mean, they're beautiful people. They took care of me, they gave me their, one of their tents, they took the blankets off of their own grounds and gave them to me. You know, these people, especially in refugee camps, um, they want to self-sustain. They, they are very intelligent people, I mean, doctors and nurses and engineers. I mean, it just so happened that the place that they were living in fell into war. One clinic uh, handled about 37,000 refugees, another refugee camp handled 1,200. That was in the middle of the open. It was tense. It was really third world medicine. If you want to listen to someone's lungs, you tell them to sit down on a curb. You know, children, we had a, a makeshift desk outside. There was no waiting room. Like if it rained, everybody's getting get soaked. In, in that refugee camp, we don't have x-rays. We don't have labs. You know, that's where it's soul experience. Okay, so I think the best thing about anesthesia as an anesthesia provider, and. Uh, the fact that I can go in and, and tell the family members and tell this patient, we'll get you into surgery, but I will get you back to your family safe and sound. And you can just see the relief on people's faces. You can see the relief on the mother and the father. I, I am a true believer that you can never show enough love. So it's okay to get a little bit attached. You know, this is something that as healthcare providers, we say, no, you have to watch that, you know leave work at work. No, I, I give everything that I have to my patients, you know, and if it's caring a little bit too much, then it's going to be caring a little bit too much. But at the end of the day, that's something that doesn't stop me 